What's going on everyone? I am Chirag and welcome to part 7 of tutorial series on API Gateway tutorial. In the previous tutorial, I have taken you through on how to upload binary file to S3 bucket using API Gateway and Lambda function. And now in this tutorial, I will cover on how to define and pass query parameters via get method to the Lambda function. So before we move on, let's consider a scenario where end client want to access a file residing within S3 bucket using get method. And we also want end client to pass the bucket name as well as the file name that he wants to access. So I will try to cover this scenario step by step in the upcoming two or three tutorial within this series. Hence, we will start with configuring path parameter, query parameter, and how we can access it within Lambda function in this tutorial. So what I will do is we will create a new API gateway and a new Lambda function so that uh, I can make sure that none of this tab uh, is missing. So we will start with the Lambda function. So assuming that you already have logged in into AWS management console and once you are there navigate to Lambda management console. Now within Lambda management console, click on create function and give it a function name. I will say access file S3 API. Select runtime as Python 3.8 within permission, select use an existing role and we will select the IAM role that we have created earlier in this tutorial series uh, that is Lambda API Gateway role and say create function. Now once the Lambda function is created, navigate to API Management Console. Over there we are going to create a new API endpoint. So click on create API, select REST API, say build, give the API name, I will say access file data within description, say access file data from S3 and say create API. Now once the API is created, click on resources from the left panel, click on actions, say create resource. So here uh, we will create the path parameter. So if you read here, then it says you can add path parameters using brackets. So for example, the resource path uh, curly braces uh, username represents a path parameter called username. So here, uh, as I mentioned earlier that we want the user or the end client to pass the bucket name. So what we will do is we will accept the bucket name within path parameter. So I will say bucket and I will put this bucket within curly braces. So the API will consider it as a path parameter and say create resource. Now once the resource is created, select that resource, click on action and create the method, say get method. And then click on this tick mark. Now here we will uh, integrate the Lambda function that we have just created that is access file S3 API and say save. Okay. Now we have successfully created API gateway, resource, method, also configured path parameter. Now it's time to configure query string. So to configure the query string, select the method that is get in my case, click on method request. Then click on URL query string parameters over here, say add query string. And I will define the query string as file 
because uh, I want the end user to pass the file name uh, as well as the bucket, right? So bucket we will get as the path parameter and within query string parameter, we will ask end user to uh, send us the file name. So name it as file, click on this tick mark, check this required checkbox because uh, we want that query string as mandatory, right? And once you uh, check the required checkbox, you will see here a warning, right? So this warning is appearing because we have not uh, configured request validator. So we have to configure that. So here uh, below authorization, click on request validator, click on this pencil mark and select validate query string parameters and headers. And then uh, click on this tick mark. So as you can see, the warning has disappeared, right? So this is how you can uh, configure query string parameter, right? So now uh, once the query string parameter has been configured, uh, we will go ahead and deploy this API. So click on actions, say deploy API, new stage, give a stage name version one and say deploy. Now we will try to invoke this API endpoint, but before invoking, uh, we will jump back to Lambda function and we will say print event so that uh, we can see that uh, how the query parameters and the path parameters is coming uh, or how we can access that, those things, right? So say print event and save this Lambda function. Navigate back to API gateway, copy this URL. We will use Postman to invoke this. So since we have the get method, so select get method, paste that endpoint URL. Now after version one, uh, we have to pass bucket name as the path parameter. So I will define bucket name as upload API tutorial. So now this is the path parameter followed by the query string, right? So question mark. So what was the query string that we have defined? That is file equal to content dot PDF, right? So in case uh, if I don't pass uh, the file query parameter, let's see what it written. So say send. Now it says missing required request parameter that is file because we have marked the query string parameter as required uh, while we was configuring the query string. So we have to pass it. So now let's pass file equal to content.pdf and say send. Now it returns status code 200, right? So it means the API endpoint is invoked successfully and Lambda function has returned the response. So let's go ahead and check the logs of the Lambda function. So why we are checking the CloudWatch logs is because we had print the event and we want to check that uh, whether or not we are getting those parameters uh, within that Lambda function. So open this log. Now, as you can see, it returned blank. It means the path parameter and the query string parameter or the query string is not being passed on to the Lambda function by API gateway. Now, in that case, what we have to do is we will go back to API gateway, click on resources from the left panel, select the method that we have created Now click on integration request, scroll down to mapping templates. Now select the second option that is when there are no templates defined and within content type say add mapping template and say application slash JSON. Click on this tick mark and now uh, if you scroll down it will ask you to generate template. 
So from generate template drop down, select method request pass through and it will uh, auto generate the template and say save. Now make sure that uh, whatever changes you make with an API gateway in order to reflect it publicly, we have to redeploy the API. So click on actions, click on deploy API, select the deployment stage and say deploy. Now let's go ahead and re-invoke the API endpoint. So uh, after we deploy or redeploy the API, it takes some time to uh, reflect the changes. So in case uh, now if I click on send, it will return 200 button logs. It might not reflect. So as you can see, the logs are being published. So as you can see now earlier, uh, we were receiving blank, right? Because we had not configured the mapping template. But now since we have configured the mapping template, we have the uh, full event being printed, right? So uh, as you can see uh, here within params, uh, there is path and there is bucket. So bucket is the uh, resource that we have created, right? If you remember then, and we have the value as upload API tutorial. So from where this value is coming, if we look at the postman, so after version one, uh, we are passing this, this string as a bucket name, right? That is upload API tutorial as path parameter, right? So, and then now uh, we have the query string parameter, which consists of file. That is our uh, query string that we have defined within, um, method request, I guess, or method execution. So that we have defined in method request over here, right? Within URL query string parameters, that is this one. And then uh, it is followed by the content.pdf. Now this is the query string value that we are passing from the postman. If we look at the postman URL, then we are passing file equal to content.pdf. So now we have the bucket name and the file name that we want to access or the end client want to access from the S3 bucket, right? So let's uh, clean this up. So click on configuration. So apart from that uh, query string and path parameters, uh, we have a lot more uh, thing or a lot more uh, metadata available. So you can go through it, right? So jump back to uh, Lambda function and here let me comment this out and let me print or maybe i will say bucket underscore name equal to event of so mm -hmm. what is it event of params i will copy and paste it over here and then we want to fetch the bucket name that is coming uh, within path parameters. So within params uh, path followed by the bucket, right? So this bucket is referring to this key and then uh, we want to access the file name. So file name equal to event of params right so event of params within that query string followed by file query string followed by file and that's printed out so print bucket name comma file name and save this lambda function now let's go ahead and reinvoke the API endpoint. So navigate to postman, say send. Now let's go ahead and check the logs. So the logs has been generated and, and we should have file name and bucket name. So let's have a look. 
So as you can see, we have bucket name as upload API tutorial and file name as content.pdf. So this is how you can define and pass query parameters as well as path parameters via get method to the lambda function. And this is how you can access it within the lambda function. So uh, we are going to use these things uh, further. As I mentioned the scenario earlier that uh, the end client want to access the file from the S3 bucket. So in the upcoming tutorial, I will uh, cover that how we can pass on the binary data from the Lambda function to the API gateway and what are the other options that uh, we can opt out for. In terms of passing the file or the binary data from the Lambda function to the API gateway and from API gateway to the end user, right? So well, uh, that's it for now. In the next tutorial, I will cover on how to define and pass query parameters via get method to the Lambda function, but using Lambda proxy integration. So the overall tutorial is going to be the same, uh, but right now uh, what we have done is we have used legacy method, but in the next tutorial, I will show you the same thing using Lambda proxy integration. So well, that's it for now. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.